the the windows and then we'll just put a little bit up there as well put in a drawing with a brush because this painting has been on the go now for about uh, well, so it's over two days. I did the first bit wet into wet and then I left it and went off and did something else and I've come back and now it's stiffened up a little bit and we're not picking too much of that white up that we originally put on and we can get a, a fair bit more detail without it splodging all over the place. So I can pick out some of these things. And at this point we can draw in a few somethings. So to, I said some things lie down and some things stand up. And we can actually paint into some of the grooves that I cut into the paint with that 3 8 flat. So we can actually draw over the paint with thin down paint and get as much detail as we want. I'm going to put some grass in there you can just draw it in. Coming down this bank, I'm just drawing with the brush. I'm going to go up into the grass on the left hand side, put some reds in there. Just using that thin down paint, painting over the thick paint that we previously put on, or I previously put on. Some things stand up, some things lie down. So if we make all this area stand up, it will cause this ground to lie down. Just to make some of this land stand up. Coming down to this track, again, just drawing with the brush. Just draw a few somethings in there, just to make that lie down. This centre track here, you always get a few bits of grass and things coming up out of that, so now's the time to do it. Like so. I'm going to go up into the tops of the trees now. I'm going to go into this left hand, this left hand one. Because now the paint's dried out a little bit more. I'm going to be able to get a bit finer branches. And that way I'll be able to get... Shaky hand's good for doing the branches, but it's not so good for doing straight lines. So I'm going to pick up some of the yellow ochre with the burnt sienna. I'm just painting a few individual leaves. I'm a great believer in having contrasts in your pictures. Something in high focus and then something sort of a little bit blurred, a little bit out of focus. I think it just makes it an interesting picture. Because it's not an illustration, this, it's a picture, it's a painting. And uh, it's a bit more... Well, I find it a bit more interesting than a photorealistic picture because if you're reproducing a photograph then you're just reproducing an instant in time whereas if you're doing a proper painting like this, this is a few hours there's about uh, an hour and a half painting in this picture I'm just going to Splodge it in. That's better. And then just work that accordingly, just so it looks like a little bit of light is catching those uh, catching those leaves, just as it's coming out of that dark area, like so. And this is just because they're lime trees; they tend to be sort of smallish leaves, and so you can. You can get it to great effect using this thumb blender, just get a bit more thinner on that. I'm going to come down and do a little bit down near the fences, the same way, down here. Now because that's, this paint's dried off a little bit, like that, in fact I think I might do a little bit in this centre bit where I was drawing, like that. What I'm going to use now is I've just cleaned this fan blender off. I've got some other risen crimson and a little bit of titanium white. And using the fan blender, just putting in a few 
No, 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 what they call it? I was calling them Hollyhocks and they're not Arnie. Maybe somebody else knows. Uh, what are they called? They're not Hollyhocks. Yeah. It's purpley foxgloves. See a lot in Wales. Yeah. On the end of the fan blender. And I'm just stiffening it onto the... onto the paint. If we get some of the cobalt blue, we we'll use the cobalt blue, a bit of white, then we can vary it up a little bit and make it sort of look a bit blue belly. I'll go and do a few over on this other side. Just stick a few in there. A bit of pure blue. Cobalt blue is about the purest blue. I mean, I'm a great fan of people like Leonardo da Vinci and so on. But unfortunately for old Leonardo, he never actually saw a pure blue because they didn't have one. But he didn't do bad, really, with the blues that he had. But we've got the benefit now of cobalt blue, which is a pure blue. And uh, we've also got uh, cadmium yellow, which is more or less the pure yellow and cadmium red. They're the three primary colours. I'll just put a few around this cottage, I think. I'll just put a bit of colour in this cottage. And I think, apart from a few bricks, we're just labouring away at it now. Put a few whites in there, a few lighter colours. Okay, now I'm going to use the rigger. Just get a bit of yellow ochre. Touch of the yellow isn't crimson in with it. And I'm just going to take the opportunity just to paint in a few bricks. So this paint is, is dried off sort of 24 hours and now you can paint you can actually paint detail into it and it's just sticky enough to take it okay on a dirty brush and we'll just put a few come down here and do the other one just to show that there's a bit of framing in there Just catching the light a little bit. In fact, I could do with a little bit of light on the top of this chimney. So we can keep on painting this up as much as we like. We'll just sign it because every painting you do, there's only one in the world. Even if you do a version of this, it won't be the same. It'll be unique. And I hope you try it. Hope you get stuck into it and see what you make of it. Thank you.